This review is made possible by Scott from Midnight Motors in Maryland. Please go check him out if you want anything imported, as well as some awesome JDM cars. Go check out his Instagram page, which is up on the screen. All right, what's up, guys? My name is Zach, and today I am driving a 1991 Nissan Datsun pickup. Up front is a 2.7 liter diesel inline four and down below is a five speed manual transmission. Guys, I'm super excited to be driving this pickup truck for a couple of different reasons. First of all, we never got this here in the States in a couple of different ways. We never got this diesel engine. We never got a Nissan Datsun pickup truck. We got the Nissan hard body pickup truck, which is similar, but not identical. And the one that we did get did not have full rear doors like this one. So it's special in a bunch of different ways. But let's get back to that 2.7 liter inline four. Well, like I said, it's a diesel engine that we never got here in the States. I'll put the horsepower and torque numbers up on the screen if I can find them. Again, non-USDM cars can sometimes be hard to find correct horsepower numbers for. And actually, as the owner has told me, this is a forklift engine. There are some forklifts here in the States. Actually, the only form we got it in was in a forklift. I'm driving a forklift on the road, essentially. Now this engine and this truck really is ridiculously slow. It is non turbo. It is not a turbo diesel. And so it doesn't really get up and go. Like I said, paired to a five speed manual transmission, the clutch is decently light, at least in terms of pickup truck clutches. You know, it's not like the Ford F-250 I drove earlier this year where the clutch was a workout. The clutch is fine, a lot of travel, and the clutch grabs a little bit higher up on the pedal, so it is a little bit extra footwork. And the actual shifter itself feels good, clicks right into gear, there's no surprises, and I like that a lot. Last but not least, of course, the Nissan Datsun pickup is four-wheel drive, and that's selectable in here and we'll talk about that a little bit later on so let's talk about the interior well in front of me i have a bunch of different gauges on the far left is my speedometer in kilometers per hour of course then i have my fuel and coolant temperature in the middle and on the right i have my tachometer of course only revs out to like 4200 which is hilarious but it's a diesel to the bottom left of that i do have my glow plug warning light so You'll have to wait till this light turns off in order to turn the vehicle on. Glow plugs, diesel. I have my fuel light, defroster, and four-wheel drive lights on the other side. Then I have a button for my rear defroster on the right and my hazards on the left. Then I have a little pull-out switch for the mechanical choke. There's actually a mechanical choke here on board in the Nissan Datsun pickup. I like that a lot. That's really, really cool. And it actually has like an engine icon on the outside. Never seen that on a choke knob. My old RX-7 used to have a choke and it just said choke. Pretty interesting there. To the right of me, I do have power windows which are auto up and down. It's sort of a two-way switch. You can actually click it and it'll go all the way down or you can hold it. You can just bring it up however you want. Totally messed up my hair. I like that a lot. Power windows for all four windows which is a definitely a nice feature for a pickup truck in 1991. Moving into the center, we have my favorite part of this pickup truck which is the clinometer, clino, clinometer, clinometer, altimeter for four wheel drive. So this actually gives me my pitch, my roll, and a third gauge that I'll label because actually at the time of filming, I don't quite know what it is. But I love these gauges. These are factory gauges from Nissan and I absolutely love the look of them. Very video gamey, you know, a lot of SUVs and trucks these days will tell you this information. The 2020 GMC, Sierra Denali that I just drove gave this information to you exactly in the heads-up display. However, this is 1991. This is now 30 years ago that gave you this information. Yeah, it's analog, but it still gave you the information. Down below that, two heating and cooling vents, nothing too crazy. And then I have my heating and cooling controls, which yes, this truck actually does have working AC. Now it is Halloween today and it is cold outside, so I'll not be using the AC, but it's nice that the truck had that. Then I have, of course, a pullout ashtray and the cigarette lighter, aftermarket radio, and then we have our center console with our shifter and four-wheel drive settings. So the four-wheel drive is actually mechanical four-wheel drive. You shift it into two high, four high, neutral, and four low, which is really, really neat. And I like mechanical shifters in vehicles. 
for the four wheel drive. It's really satisfying when you finally do put it into four wheel. It has that clunk, you're doing something. More modern vehicles just have push button four wheel drive. It's not as satisfying. Then the shifters to the right of that, Love the shifter, like I said, feels great, has great shifting feel. Then I have an added cup holder, these are not factory, and the center console. Now the seats are comfortable, they have this sort of black and white pattern on them, very, very Japanese. A lot of JDM, Japanese domestic market vehicles, will have seats like this. They're decently comfortable, I mean, I'm not, you know, sitting in a Rolls Royce Phantom, however, also my back is not being broken. So the seats are all right. But speaking of seats, let's do a back seat review because we have full back seats. All right, so we're in the back of the 1991 Nissan Datsun pickup. And the cool thing, like I mentioned earlier, is the fact that we never got this version or this body of this truck that had the full four doors. We got these sort of jump seats, half extra extended cab thing. And those seats were only good for either children under five or amputees. This is actually a full back seat. It's not the best. My knees do hit the front seat. However, I can sit back here. You know, I could sit back here for an hour or so. I'm not going to mind too much. I don't really get any amenities back here. No center console or anything like that. I do have the power windows, like I mentioned up front. And I do have little ashtrays in the doors, which is kind of funny. They kind of spin out because, of course, every Japanese domestic market vehicle has ashtrays just everywhere. Absolutely everywhere, of course. So the Datsun pickup is no different. However, let's go check out the bed, of course, because this is a pickup truck. All right, so we're around the back of the Nissan Datsun pickup, and what this is right here is actually how much it's supposed to be able to hold in the bed. That's actually a Japanese thing. Um, for cargo vehicles, they actually give you a rating so people can tell. Tailgate pulls down just like this. Pretty standard tailgate, really nothing too crazy back here. It's a pretty average truck bed besides that, really. No amenities, no tie downs even, which I would have liked to have seen. However, it is what it is. Bada bing, bada boom. There is your Nissan Datsun pickup. Now we gotta talk about the looks. First and foremost, yes, this vehicle came with three mirrors, two on the doors and one up on the fender. That is not like an added auto zone mirror. That's a factory mirror up on the fender, which is really, really neat. But I like the look of it. I love the Datsun logos on it. This is the first vehicle I've ever driven with the Datsun name on it. And so let's talk about that. Let's do some final thoughts on the 1991 Nissan Datsun pickup. Well, this is sort of when Nissan started phasing out the Datsun nameplate. Nissan was Datsun here in America for a very long time. And in the 80s, they actually started phasing it out, early 80s. By the mid 80s, the Datsun name was completely gone from the American market, but not in Japan. And so this is one of the last vehicles to actually sport the Datsun name. My friend was theorizing that they did this because trucks were viewed as more American and Datsun was the American version of Nissan for a time. Maybe, I don't know. I'm not quite sure why it's called that. However, this is a cool little pickup truck. It's this little diesel. You have to remember that over in Japan, this was like as big of a pickup truck as anyone would own. On the streets were like Honda Actis, which were K trucks. You know, you don't really own a Ford F-350 over there. There's no dually trucks that are owned by civilians. This is pretty much as big as you would go, which I think is absolutely neat. It, it, it This truck is just something so special, so different, so unique, at least here in the American market. It begs to ask the question of, would these have sold well if they were sold here in the US? Was there any real competition for a smaller diesel pickup truck? There weren't really diesel Rangers or diesel Tacomas, so this truck really wouldn't have had any competition, which is probably why they didn't bring them over here. However, I'm extremely thankful to be driving this thing. This thing is so quirky by American standards. And so huge thank you to Scott for letting me take out his Nissan Datsun pickup. His information is up on the screen as well as linked in the description below. He actually imports a lot of different vehicles from Japan. This just happens to be one of them. I just recently reviewed his Honda Todays. So go check out his Instagram. He has tons and tons of cool stuff. And I am very, very appreciative of him letting me take these vehicles out because these are so fun. At least for me, an American, this is something that I wouldn't get to experience otherwise. So huge thank you to him. But 
I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.